Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 30, and this is a very special one. Right outside the gate, I want to say I sound different. I've been fighting a cold. You're going to hear me say something about that later on in the show as well. Uh, but this is Keith, Doug, my good friend. How are you doing? Good. You know, uh, your voice kind of worries me, but today I'm uh, highly caffeinated, ready to go. And you're right. We have an amazing guest. We've been working for a couple weeks uh, trying to get him on. We met him at some uh, locations. We'll talk about it in the interview, but super exciting episode today. Oh, yeah. Doug and I are so stoked. Like, sickness was not going to keep me from this. So I am going to probably rely on Doug to interpret in case my voice goes out. I do apologize. But we are so excited about this. And we won't do nerd news this week because we typically do that when we have a special guest. Uh, but this one, I feel like, man, this is this is so far. Uh, this is our VIP that we've had on the show. And uh, this dude is awesome. We cannot wait to share him with you. So we're not going to delay it anymore. We're just going to jump right on into the interview. You ready, Doug? Yeah, let's get into it. Right, let's do it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 30, season number two. Of course, this is Keith and Doug. And I just want to, before we get into it, I want to say, I introduce our guest. I'm sorry about my voice. I've been fighting a cold. Uh, so I'm going to be relying on these two guys to like help me get through this just because hopefully my voice holds out. Uh, this is the best it's sounded in a week. Otherwise, it's been nothing but a whisper. So I do apologize if I sound a little odd, uh, but we're just going to get into it, man. We are so excited. Uh, today on the podcast, we are thrilled uh, to welcome this truly remarkable guest, Elliot Maples, better known to fans as Neo Ness on YouTube. In a relatively short time, Neo has established himself as an accomplished YouTuber and a trusted voice within the gaming and collecting community. His channel has quickly become a much watch for enthusiasts, especially for those with a passion for the iconic Neo Geo. We will get into that. Uh, Ness holds one of the most comprehensive Neo Geo collections uh, publicly showcased from a private collector. His expertise in all things Neo Geo is unparalleled, but his love for gaming doesn't stop there because Elliot, uh, his collection's crazy. It has Nintendo, Sega, you name it, all kinds of stuff. And it's a true, you know, treasure trove for any video game fan. Uh, through his channel, Ness goes beyond simply just displaying his incredible finds. He's committed to educating collectors, sharing knowledge, and supporting the broader uh, collecting community. And whether you're just getting started or if you're a seasoned collector, uh, Elliot offers all kinds of awesome advice and insights uh, to help empower everyone within the hobby. We can't wait to dive into Elliot's journey as a content creator and learn more about his passion. Please welcome Neo Ness. How you doing, buddy? Wow, yeah. I'm doing great. You like that? You like that? <laughs> that was an amazing introduction. Thank you so much. I worked hard on it, man. I, we've done we've done a lot of homework. Doug and I really dug in, man. We we are so excited uh, to have you. Absolutely. And we met you. What was it, Doug? What month was that in? I, it's uh, a blur. Uh, what's it? It was the last uh, April con in yeah April in yeah. Uh, Golly, it's, oh yeah, Col Columbia, Missouri, the Columbia yeah. con. You yeah. and Mr. Rightway were there mm -hmm. to do panels. And yes. uh, the way that we met you was kind of funny. My brother, the why we were there was we were helping my brother, who is a consummate. He's not just a collector. He's a dealer uh, mm -hmm. and private. He doesn't have like a storefront, except he does at a, at a flea market called Midway. It's You guys should check it out. It's really awesome. Um, but we were working his booth. And uh, I just noticed him and Steven, right way. They were like, make, they were wheeling and dealing. Next thing I know, you're over there. All your friends are over there. And you guys are like just going through all the bins. <laughs> and we just hit it off. We're like, we were just yeah, it. <laughs> it was awesome. It was, it was definitely a fun time. That was actually my first uh, convention out of state. Really? Yeah, that was my oh. first one. Um, first time being on a panel. Um, so it was, it was really awesome. The, the, the folks, the crowd, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, that con's getting better and better each year. Oh, we, yeah. hope, we hope they keep it up. It was started by, you know, a young kid. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. now, I think he's going off to Sumner. He's going to college. But yeah, uh, I think it, it's on again next year. I think they may be going to a bigger venue because it I, I saw that. I was yeah. like, wow, that's yeah. that's amazing. Do you know if you're going to be able to make it again? I, if, if I would love to go again, oh. I, it was, it was really awesome. I hope they invite you guys back. If so, we definitely need to, to meet up yeah. oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So yeah. So, you know, we're gonna jump right into it. Doug, I'm gonna give my voice a rest, man. You jump right in. You, you tackle it. <laughs> Doug's got his, he's ready to go. Yeah. So, uh, I think, uh, since we're on the uh, convention aspect, the uh, first question I've got to ask is, you know, when you arrive at these conventions, these stores, these swap meets, 
uh, what's your strategy? I mean, do you go like, do you kind of aerial surveillance, like the whole thing, or do you go straight to a particular person? I, I have a few years under my belt now. Just my, my first con was here in Dallas and that was for a retro Palooza. And it was like, I was a kid in a candy store. As soon as he walked in, I'm like, Oh my God, there's so many great games. I need to have this. I got, um, it was bad. It was really bad. And then, my buddy and his wife, I mean, she's, she's a beast when it comes to wheeling and dealing. Like she, she will talk you down. She'll get the best price possible. And I didn't realize until the end of the con that she's like, you've been paying full price for all this stuff. I'm like, uh, yeah, well, that's what the price they had it at. And I, I didn't know any better. And she's like, you've got to negotiate. And I'm like, well, crap. I wish you would have told me that yesterday after I spent yeah. all this money on all these games and accessories and all this stuff. And uh, so year two, they come back, they come down every year. And the, the second year, uh, oh man, I was, I was locked in. Generally now it's, I'll do a once over, I'll do a pass through and then just make sure because vendors sometimes have duplicate items and some vendor may have it, you know, 10, 15 bucks cheaper than the other vendor condition might be a difference. So I've made it a habit to go through and walk once. Now that's bit me in the butt a couple of times because it may be like one vendor has this one particular Neo Geo item knowing I'm not going to see it at any other vendor. And then I come back like, hey, dude, I sold it. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and we've noticed, like, work in a booth. So that's what I love about my brother. He's not, because it's not his main gig, He mm -hmm. like, his thing is he loves the hunt, and he loves matching people up with what they're looking for. Like, that's all he does it for. And, of course, he has extensive knowledge in it, too. But he's not, like, in it for the money. I love that. Like oftentimes people will come to us like, God, you guys' prices are so much like he will always look at the market rate and then he like cuts it just because he wants to pair people up and he has yeah. such a massive inventory. He's got to clear it anyway. So it's like, he's a different mindset of a vendor. But what's funny is when we're working the booth, people will come up and they'll say, Hey, can I look at that? They'll look at them. Like, I'll be right back. Five minutes later, it's gone. And they're, yeah. they're crushed. They're crushed. That happens all the time because you're right. It's like, the timing, I guess you have to have your strategy down too, because you, you don't want to make a foolish decision uh, in, you know, buying it, but you want to get the timing right too. Definitely. Um, I also make it a habit to wear like my first is like, if I go to a two day or three day con, I'll wear a Neo Geo shirt the first day. Uh, yeah. It's always like, I don't know. It's kind of like this yeah, it's it's superstition, like but it's kind of like my thing. So Generally, the vendors will be like, oh, you're a Neo Geo guy? You collect? I'm like, yeah, I collect. Well, I've got some Neo Geo games over here. And I'm like, oh, that's, that, that's awesome. I thought that's great. I have it. <laughs> I already own it. They, they, don't know it. How, they don't know how extensive your collection is. No. It, it, I, I did have a vendor that was from California. Um, he had sold my shirt, and him and I were talking, and he was talking about how him and his father had acquired a massive lot in, in California. We're talking about some some of the big, big titles that I don't have. Mm -hmm. He paid dirt cheap for it. So it's always cool to hear stories like that from different people wearing different shirts and folks asking, like, man, where'd you get that from? And, you know, how long have you been into it? I love those conversations. So let's talk about the Neo Geo a little bit. <clears throat> so what I love about you, a lot of people, you know, it, it's very popular to stick with the mainstays, Super Nintendo, Genesis, regular NES. Dude, you're like, uh, I don't know. It's like you go to prison, you punch the biggest guy in the yard. You decide to take on, uh, you, like, if people don't know. So, Elliot, correct me because you're the expert. So what makes Neo Geo different, it, it is that their goal as a company was to emulate what the arcades, the exact arcade experience, and the prices of those systems back in the 90s, early 90s, was exponential, wasn't it? it like, what makes it hard to collect for? And then talk about, like, just help us set the stage for us as to why Neo Geo is a little bit different to collect for and why I think you're a little bit crazy if we just jump into that one right there, man. First, I'll, I'll say that all my collecting buddies thought I was insane because it was the heart of the pandemic. I decided that I was going to get back into collecting video games. I had let go of my collection over the years, just sporadically. And my buddy had was maybe six or seven carts away from finishing his full NES set. So he was all he, all he needed. Well, he doesn't have stadium events. That's the only one he doesn't have. He bought a PAL version. 
And I'm on the phone with him and say, hey, dude, I'm going to start collecting. He's like, man, what are you going to go? What are you going to do Genesis? Are you going to do Super Nintendo? I say, I'm going to go do Neo Geo. He's like, wait, what? What? Are you insane? I'm like, and at the time, I'm not really calculating what it, the cost of this. You know, I just remember back in the day, there were games that I wanted to play. And my mom's like, no, you're not getting that. You know, stick to your Nintendo, stick to your Sega. That's what you're playing. So, you know, we're talking about 1990 in the heart of, you know, you know, one of the biggest battles of who, which console do you want, Nintendo or, or Sega? Neo Geo was approaching more of a, an adult audience. Even, even the advertisements were very, you know, oh, yeah. the borderline crystal. rated yeah. R, you oh, know, yeah. subliminal, right? Yeah. Um, the, the console was released at $650. We're talking about PlayStation 5 Pro. <laughs> pretty yeah. much, right? Now, is that was that the M, the MVS? Is that am I saying that right? That's the AES. So the Thank the you. home entertainment system is the AES, the MVS is, is the is the arcade cabinet version. It, it basically had the same guts, the same circuitry. The same circuitry. So when you yeah. when you break open a cartridge for an MVS cartridge and an AES cartridge, the boards are exactly the same outside of the contact points. So you know, let's say, for instance, someone bought an MBS cart for, you know, 20 or 30 bucks. Oh, let me shove this in my AES console. That's not going to work. Yeah. SNK made sure of that. Um, and when the games were released back in the 90s, you're talking about $200, $250 a piece when they per were game. released per game. Yeah. But now, they're not oh, ports, but, right? Let me no, learn. no, they are, they Straight are up. 100, one for one identical in terms of uh tech graphics everything um to the arcade version so it was that was their advertisement was hey we are bringing the arcade straight to your home and that is exactly how you're going to play it even to the point to where they were the first console to introduce the the memory card right so you know let's say for instance you're at home and you're playing you know magician lord or something like that and you wanted to save points and all that, you're going to the arcade later on. You take that memory card and you slot it in at the arcade, pick up where you left off at home. Oh, that's oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's great. And Neo Geo was one of those things I would see in an arcade. I'd see the cabinet and mm-hmm. I'd play them in the arcade. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anybody that owned one because of the cost. I knew one kid that always bragged about it. And then he ended up buying an Atari Jaguar instead. <laughs> I know. And like the only game on it was like the alien game and doom. I think that's like yeah. all he had. And yeah. I, I don't know, man, I, that, that, those were my, my recollections, but I'm, I'm going to segue into that. And then Doug, I want to throw it back to you, but you just mentioned, so you're, you're collecting for one of the hardest systems. You recently did a, vi- a video where it was about quality over quantity. And I think this showcases like your journey as a collector, what is something that you know about collecting that you wish when you first started? You kind of touched on it when you said to your friend, hey, you need to haggle. But that video really kind of resonated with me because I think the same, whether it's comic book collecting or when you first start anything, you're almost like a kid in a candy shop. Like, what inspired that video for you in starting to really refine your collection? I know you recently moved. You now have an mm-hmm. awesome new game. People, you got to go. We will talk about his socials in a bit. He has an awesome game room. You kind of see in the background there. What inspired quality over quantity and how has your collecting evolved, um, you know, throughout the time and what's inspired that? Originally, when I started collecting for Neo Geo, I didn't realize how scarce it was for me to find a cart, just any kind of game. A lot of retro stores locally didn't have games just on the shelf for you to purchase. So that resorted to me to go to online and buy these games. And I originally started just buying Japanese um, home cartridges just because the was were cheaper. Um, and I did that more for due diligence to understand, you know, what am I actually looking at? How do I tell, you know, what's, what's fake, what's real, things of that nature. Um, and then that's what branched me out into other consoles to collect for. Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation, all those things. But in somewhere in the middle of that turned into me going down this, this, this YouTube craze of looking at all these collectors, like, Hey, 
there's cheap ways of finding how to get these games. You can go to Goodwills, you can go to pawn shops, all these things. I had no idea. So that opened my eyes to a completely new world of collecting video games instead of me just going to a store and paying MSRP, right? And from there, it branched off into this massive amount of games I started collecting for. So if I dropped, you know, a large sum of money for one Neo Geo game, and then I'm like, okay, I have to take a break. That key, me going after other consoles that were cheaper kept me from getting burnt out. That makes sense. So that makes in, sense. In, in that process, though, I ended up picking up tons of games, buying games that I know I wasn't going to play, I know I didn't need, and then we move. So oh. when I start packing all this stuff up, I'm looking at, like, why do I have this? Yeah. Why do I need this? Why would I put myself through this hassle of moving all this heavy crap up here into this new house? It frustrated me to the point to where I knew I was trying to segment my new game room in a way to where it was presentable. It was modest. It was something that just wasn't slap you in the face all over the place. I wanted to be quality. I wanted quality. Right. So then um, my buddy, Steve, Mr. Rightway, he was like, this is what I do. This is, I took this to heart too. He's like, if you ever want to trade something and you're not sure if you can let go of it, take it off your shelf, put it to the side, out of sight, out of mind, and keep looking at your shelf for a week or two. If, if it feels like you can let go of it and it doesn't matter, get rid of it. So I started doing that. And then it got to a point to where I was like, I have a lot of filler and junk games that I'm not going to play, have no intentions on playing. It's time to let go of it. And then that's what spiraled into that video. I was like, I wonder how many other people out there have that same perspective. Like I'm buying this huge collection. And we always hear that from so many people. Like I'm going after this. I want a whole set of this and I want all these games, but we never talk about the other side of that in terms of like what happens when I've just, accumulate it so much i have no more space for it what do i do yeah the practicality gets lost in you know the hunt i mean there's something about the hunt i've seen that with with my brother and that's what i love about him not being a standard vendor and that's why he you know his storefront is you know at a at a flea market that they have you know and and he's i've seen him collect and it's just of course he's going about it a different way because you know he just loves the vending aspect of it but you're right because there's that practicality between as a collector you know how much can my room sustain versus mm. and i love the advice that steve uh, mr rightway gave you because dang you know it's like michelle Quando stuff you know <laughs> does this bring you joy <laughs> when you remember that when she cluttering decluttering people saying it's kind of the same philosophy though if, it you, is. if, if it's a missing off of your bookshelf and you still want it there i think that that's great advice so that's awesome that's that's really cool doug i'm gonna let you take it yeah hey you're doing a great job <laughs> So as you're looking, you know, you've been collecting for a while. What is like the one thing that you wanted to pick up first or kind of like a holy grail? Or if you haven't got it, what's that white whale you're still looking for as in terms of collecting? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of weird, too, because now my definition of grail has changed, too, because I actually technically actually picked up my grail game two years ago. It was a Garo Mark of the Wolves fighting game. And I was introduced. It's a Fatal Fury game. It was the last one on um, Neo. Well, the last Fatal Fury game in the series on Neo Geo. But I was introduced to the game on Dreamcast. So back in my high school days, um, a lot, me and my buddies, we, we were like tournament, tournament ready. We were always playing fighting games and competing and stuff like that. Um, And Garo was just in the rotation and I fell in love with it. And this was around the time that Street Fighter Third Strike had come out, which was an amazing game in its in itself. And a lot of folks in the time compare the two. Like Third Capcom had Third Strike and then SNK had Garo. These two were just paired together in terms of which one's better. And that's kind of like speculation online. That was my grail game. And I remember it to the day. I had just bought like maybe three or four Neo Geo games. And I was like, oh man. I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break for a couple of months now. And then I had built a really good relationship with my Neo Geo seller here in Dallas. Um, He's been in a community for over 25 years. So 
everyone trusts him and he was the guy. And he knew I was looking for Garo and he was like, hey, I got one. Do you need it? And I'm like, oh my God. And I was like, I don't have the money for this and I'm going to lose out. And that, the timing. The, the timing. timing was just oh. horrible. So I'm talking to my buddy um, and he goes by Zelda hat guy, but he, um, he was the one, of course, that had the, the full set for Nintendo, but he's like, dude, I'll spot you the money. And I was like, no, bro, you can't do that. He's like, no, no, I know how it feels. What you're going through right That's now is awesome. how I felt when I found little Samson. Wow. So he, and me and him have been gaming for over like 14 years now. So we have a talk every day. Yeah. Um, and he was like, dude, just pay me back whenever you get it. It's no problem. I'm like, bro, this is a lot of money. Yeah. Like, right in that, that's just the relationship him and I have. And he was like, when you get paid, bro, I want you to have this because I know what it means to you as a collector to finally get your grail game. And I paid him back real quick. As soon as I got paid, I was like, yeah. like here you go. Yeah. But yeah, that's awesome. It, it was a, when I got it in my hands, that's what solidified to me that, okay, I'm really doing this. Yeah. This isn't just a, you know, 30 seconds of collecting and okay, I'm done. I'm burnt out. I'm going to something else. This is what solidified it for me. So outside of like it being the grail, like what you said, your version of grail mm -hmm. has changed. Would you say that it's like about emotional significance to you from your past? Like how do you, is there sentimental value to, and if it's not that particular game, is there another one in your collection? And maybe it's not what you would define as a grail or one to close out your collection. Is there anything in your collection that you would consider more emotionally significant to you from a sentimental standpoint? Um, I actually have a few items across like there's, there's always a memory of something, right? So the Garo is because, you know, my, my friend helped me acquire that. That's something I can never let go of. My original Nintendo console is beat up as it is. I've had that since I was four years old. My mom introduced me to video games. I have a Pac-Man cabinet behind me because that is a very significant part of my childhood with her and I gaming. She introduced me to video games. She's the reason why I love the video games so much because she was a gamer. And Pac-Man is very significant to me. Garo is very significant to me. Funny enough, Dragon Ball GT Final Bout on PlayStation 1 is very significant to me because, one, I always wanted Dragon Ball games growing up, but you look in the magazines at the time, this is before Tenkaichi and Budokai and all these things, there were no English-based Dragon Ball games yeah. until GT came out. Yeah. There was only 10,000 copies of that game, and I was just randomly walking the mall with my mom one day in EB Games, and it was 20 bucks. Wow. And she bought it. And I was like, that's cool. oh my God. And I never, and I, I still have that copy. Like there's just, there's many trinkets and items in my collection that even before I started recollecting, I kept because it had the nostalgia, the sentimental value. Those are the things you can't let go. Those, those are what I would classify my grails. Um, th are there games out there that I would love to have in my collection? There's probably one neo geo game left out of the bunch that i would just go crazy for and it's a golf game of all things oh, the, the golf games are pretty good on neo geo though i mean i played a few of them neo turf masters is a really awesome game um and quick side note to that is there's actually a version of neo turf masters on super nintendo the developers oh. that that went to SNK or they went to a company called Nazca and they created Neo Turf Masters. They were at Irem first, and Irem Skins is a game on Super Nintendo. Looks very similar to Neo Turf Masters on Super Nintendo. Okay. So they they ported it over essentially. S essentially, yeah. Very, very similar. Yeah. Oh, very cool. You know, and what you said about how people in our past inform our future. I mean, for me, I was always as a kid, I was really into big box PC gaming because my dad mm. was into that. Now my brother was, we had all the consoles. We were very fortunate. We didn't have all of them. Let me be clear about that. We, we had, we were very lucky though, but uh, it was one of them deals where my brother and I would always opt to like, say we, we kept renting a super Nintendo 
and we we had a lobby to our parents say look fourteen dollars for seven days every time we rent it we could just buy a super nintendo and they were like look if we combine christmas and your birthdays for both of you we'll go ahead and get one we had to like lobby right but we had yeah. a super nintendo we had a sega cd and a nes um and but i remember you know for me though i always gravitated but it was because it was time spent with my dad on the big box pc games, yeah you know? It's yeah. just so funny, those things. And Doug, you and I have talked about these before. You have things from like your past. You, you, you spent time with your cousins up in your grandparents' loft playing Nintendo. What's Super Nintendo? Was your jam, right? Super Nintendo is what we grew up with. You know, we're in this old farmhouse and there's like 20, 20 of us. And, uh, you know, if we're probably too heavy, we're going to end up in the kitchen if we keep fighting. But <laughs> was the floor you know, doing there's this? There's 20 of us up there in this old farmhouse playing on this old time TV. It's one of those in the furniture. It's got the whole wooden. The wooden everything. Yeah. CRT. I mean, but that's my memories. And that is amazing memories back then. So, oh, so I, love awesome. that, I love that you bring up the sentimental value of it because I think that's like the core to what you're doing, right? And what keeps you connected makes you feel young. And, uh, you know, that's what I love about your passion. There. So Doug, go ahead and take it away. I'll let you do the next one, buddy. Yeah. We look at these collections, but, uh, some physical game collectors kind of look down on emulation, but it is becoming more popular. You're seeing it on the switch. Now, all these handhelds, what do you think about emulation over collecting? And then have you played any emulations or do you emulate any games uh, at your house? I finish every video on my channel with a catchphrase called collect and play the way that you want to collect and play your games. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, I do. I love it. I love it. It's so non judgmental because I watch some people, they, they will crap all over if you're not like they're purists, right? They don't even like, they don't even like misters, right? (laughs) They, if you're not on native original hardware, it doesn't count. And I love that you're so open-minded about that. Absolutely. You you kind of have to be now. It's uh, I I do emulate uh, like my my Steam Deck is modded with. Same. I, I mean, I've got the entire Neo Geo library on my Steam Deck on it's the amazing. go. It's amazing on the it's, go. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and, and I, I get it. You know, Nintendo is very against it in terms of they they want their properties that Nintendo ninjas not play. They, Neo, Neo, they, Neo. This not a problem. You have a collection. Like, They're all backups for you. They're just backups. That, yes, they are backups. It, I have had conversations with individuals that say, why you spend all this money on all these games and you can just emulate them? And they're not wrong. They're, yeah. I mean, there's, there's some, like, but well, let's be clear. Not all emulations are 100% perfect. Well, we got, we were just talking about that. Like I, I jumped into like uh, some emulation things recently. I, I was also modding out like when I steamed it. And, it was like flickering and it was a bad ROM or it's a bad yeah. emulator. Yeah. And that's why I was just telling Doug before this is like, there's just something about being able to put the cart or the disc in and it just freaking work. Yeah. There's something about that. Right. I mean, you can't get, you can't it, argue it, that. Yeah. You don't have to worry. It, it's not going to let you down. No. It's not going to let you down from a cart based standpoint. It's no. not going to let you down as long as you take care of it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I've had them to where, I'll get so far in a game on an emulated game if I'm just happen to play it on my Steam Deck on the go, and it'll just lock, and I I can't finish the game because there's something wrong. Yeah, Yeah, there's something wrong with the ROM. You are so right. So there's pros and cons to both. I love the convenience of like I'm getting ready to go on a trip for work, for example. I bring my deck. I got thousands, like seven thousand games on that dang thing. I love that. Uh, But that convenience, though, trade off is you're going to run in those weird nuances. Yes, you know, but I, I love your, I love your mantra. It's very open minded. It, the one thing that is a hang up for me, and I'm glad you uh, mentioned Dreamcast because that was one of my favorites. And we can talk all day about how I think it got overshadowed and maybe oh man marketing. But uh, when it comes to emulation, the and correct me if I'm wrong, the VMU Virtual Memory Unit, you can play little games on there. Yeah. There is nothing like me sitting next to all my cousins upstairs doing my little play call on uh, NFL 2K2 <sighs> on my little VMU. The you sports games. On Dude. Emulation as far as I know so far. Doug, the so sports that games. That's what I miss big time. Yeah. Wasn't it? The sports games on the Dreamcast were just something oh, they special. they were amazing. No, the they 2K were, they series. Were, oh, my yeah. gosh. 
they were so good nfl nhl and then they did some uh, baseball games too i think the Mm -hmm. stick of bass fishing was amazing yeah i love the nba 2k series there's just like a feel to the controls Mm -hmm. it just flew that was a great controller i thought it was It was, but you, I'm sure you don't, do you have a lot or do you have, in, you have, you're into Dreamcast. Like how much Dreamcast oh, yeah. do you have? Like in your, I, I call, I picked up games that I played on the Dreamcast when I was growing up. So yeah, that, I didn't go really, for like a full set or anything like that. But yeah. every game that I played back in high school and all that stuff, I have, I still have my original Dreamcast. Um, one of my friends gifted me a Dreamcast in the box for a birthday yeah. gift, which I was like, Oh my God. It's so amazing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's um, awesome. It's uh, I remember picking it up at, let's see. Babbage's had just converted the name to GameStop. They had just yeah. started doing that and it was 80 bucks. I remember paying 80 bucks for my Dreamcast. Oh, PlayStation two had just come out yeah. and selling out everywhere like hotcakes, but the Dreamcast was just, it was amazing amazing console it was a great console it just mm-hmm. got beat out the library they just couldn't yeah and it. unfortunate too because i think they to your point if they had marketed it more early i think they could have survived a little bit longer because i believe they were the first ones to or one of the first ones to successfully do online play they had yeah. a modem they had a modem yeah. on the back of it it was running mm-hmm. windows windows ce is yes. what the yeah. os was it and it had there. a 56k modem is fantasy star online i remember it do you remember that oh dude that blazing 56k speed there dude. yeah man yeah man get on it it's better than 36k oh yeah <laughs> that's awesome uh i'll take the next one doug and then i'll hand it back to you we have a whole bunch of questions we've been preparing yeah, good. for weeks for you buddy uh, so you go to conventions mm-hmm. and you get you know, feedback from your viewing community all the time. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that viewers have about just general content creation, particularly when it comes to niche topics like retro game collecting? And is there anything that frequently surprises them about how much work goes into these topics? Now, this is both not just with your content creation, but with your collecting. Whenever you're, you know, advising people, is there something that people just always assume and you drop some knowledge on them uh, that they just kind of miss about both collecting or content creating? Yeah. Um, they see the, they see the positive side of everything through content creating, right? So highlight reel, they see the highlight reel. You don't see the, the, the strikeouts on a weekly basis, right? That doesn't sell. That doesn't get you watching the channels. Also on the, the opposite side of that is, um, what you find out there may not be what who, whoever's looking or whoever, whatever. Everyone has a different niche. They have a different console. They have a different item that they're looking for. So it doesn't resonate with everyone. I think from that perspective, it's trying to find a middle ground for everyone to understand why should I watch or why should I listen or why should I engage? And this has nothing to do with what other portion or genre that i'm looking at that doesn't this doesn't resonate with me a lot of times i'll go back to neo geo it's hard for me it's a lot harder for me than you know like a content creator that's talking about nintendo or playstation just because they're still around they're still kicking they're still going snk is just making a game here or there generally it's a fighting game and i have to figure i have to come to a conclusion to say okay look yeah, I'm talking about one console and my channel specializes in that, but there's still a lot of cool, you know, tips and tricks that you can associate with the broader audience across the board to discuss, you know, everything because we, we all go through the same trials and tribulations of finding an item or trying to figure out, okay, how do I deal with a potential fake seller or someone that's going to sell me something that's fake. How do I deal with that? Well, we run through that scenario across the board for everyone. And I know I'm all over the place with this. No, 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 you're, no, you're spot on. Um, it, so for me, just, it's just been one of those things that I've personally, you know, outside of the, the content creating is like, okay, how do I translate some of this stuff into my real life too? Right. It's like with work, 
um, I have, you know, I have people that I work with and, you know, they may be a little bit greener around the ears with in their careers and they don't understand. And I'm like, let me break an analogy down for you in terms of like, look, look at your broad picture and build your steps and goals towards that. Right. So I kind of translate that for my gamers out there that I'm new to collecting. I want to collect. And this is what I go after. And then they ask somebody over here and they're like, Oh yeah, just buy all five of those and you'll be good to go. And I'm like, let's take a different approach. What's your end goal? What are you looking to accomplish? And if you don't know that, that's okay. But you should probably do that first before you really dive in. So that way you're not like me and I'm just like, oh, I got all this stuff now. And now I'm trying to condense it down. And you could probably potentially save yourself some money in the overall doing that. And you could save yourself some headache to say like, dang, I invested all my time and energy and love in this certain area. And I don't really care about it now. So it just, it's kind of one of those things. I love, I love the, the, the angle you take. Yes. Your focus on a particular console, but Mm -hmm. what I love about your channel content is that it's more than that in that you, you try to educate and share. And I I think you and right way do that very well in that, you know, you just did one about scammers uh, because you were seeing people getting ripped off uh, inside of Facebook groups and, I love that you take that step back approach and you take really the community approach and that, yeah, you're, you're in one particular uh, console focus, but I love that you take it and you take that step back and you try to apply it to everybody and you educate everyone wholesale because, you know, a lot of content creators look like you're right. They're just all about, they're very tactical. They're not strategic. They're all about, you know, my channel is only about Nest. We're only going to talk about Nest and they don't deviate and they don't, I don't know. It does. They never take that step back and they never like educate. And I love, cause it's like you build a sense of community through your, your channel and what you're doing and what right way is doing and what all you guys know. I watch your podcasts and I don't, I love that because people can watch it in despite what they're collecting, they can walk away with something that, yeah. you know, that's applicable to them. So I love that. That's great. That's awesome. Thank you. All right, Doug, I've been hogging them. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> You know, we've been talking a while about collecting physical games and stuff. Have you collected other things like standees, store displays, magazines, toys, stuff like that? No. Um, well, I have posters, and the um, majority of those are just Neo Geo posters that I got framed. And they're in there. Um, at one point, I was like, yeah, I probably could go for, you know, neon signs and standees and all that stuff, but. It takes up a lot of room, though. It takes up a tremendous amount of room to the point to where I've actually consolidated all my gaming into this one room that I'm in right now. And that's the way I want to keep it moving forward. Um, yeah, there's still be little things here and there that I'll add, unless it's like, like I'd probably say the only standee that I would add is if it was a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic standee. <laughs> Nice. I would absolutely love to have that. Like if it was one of those, then yes, I, nice. I would take it in a heartbeat. You never know. Um, you may run across one. I, I, I might. I might. It, I, I have other things that I collect. And I was talking to some friends yesterday and um, I went to my buddy's house and his neighbor, he was they, they got on the topic. I was outside on the phone. They were on a topic and they started talking about my YouTube channel. And his neighbor is a huge comic book collector. And He's like, man, let me take you over to the house and show you. And he had file cabinets filled with comic books that he's been collecting since like 1992. Oh, yeah. And I used to collect comic books and the wife was like, you got to get rid of these. And I'm like, okay, I'll get rid of them. And that still to this day hurts me that I got rid of those comic books. It's probably one of those those gut punches that you just never want to like, Oh, that's yeah. still there. The blow the the bruise is still there. It's not going to yeah. go away. Um, yeah. I think I'm in a, I'm in a good place now to where I'm probably not going to add like crazy amount of super duper big collectibles and stuff like that. I just want to keep it real minimalistic now. That's good. Space is so limited, right? Yes. Yes. Not all of us have big fancy rooms like Doug there behind him. 
You know, I think I'm kind of in the same boat of uh, we built our house and my wife's like, you get one room. So you're looking at my stuff back behind me here. <laughs> now, to be fair, my, one room of collections. My brother and I are slowly filling that back wall. When the, If you go back to season one yeah. of the podcast, that wall is bare. And uh, like we got him a pit boy. If you look in the back there. Yeah, if I can uh, point to it, like Vanna yeah. White here. Like, yeah. He does. <laughs> He doesn't know yet. He's got a birthday coming up, and one of our episodes is we're going to surprise him with something my brother and I've been working on. Well, um, that was a surprise last birthday, and you all did it, too much. So I oh, he ain't seen time. nothing yet. You, you just wait. Oh. So we're going to be oh. we're going to be filling this, filling it up. So, but I hear what you're saying yeah. because you're right. You have to be respectful of your space because you yeah. can get out of control. And I think that's where the quality over quantity probably comes in on that yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I hear you about the comic books. Like I was a big comic book collector and my collection was the same way it went away and i remember like at one point like in my 30s i was like i i, I miss my comic books but i didn't want to like have as many as i did so what i did was i put together like the sentiment like to me superman was my dude in the 90s when he died the whole death of superman series i rebuilt that entire just that run and complete with all of um you know the different issue releases because they did you know re-releases yeah yeah and so i i have that and i've got uh i've allowed myself like i got two boxes that is it but i don't go beyond that but that's because it's special it's like because you're right it's like a hole it's like i miss it it's part of my childhood i just i want to have that and so yeah. i rebuilt it again but i limited myself to just that you know because of the space you know i have virtual background because while i'm recording like this tiny little sound closet here uh, i don't have a dedicated room because my house is full of teenagers <laughs> so i don't have a dedicated room uh, in that but that's awesome it's really cool all right um yeah, yeah i think i'll throw it back to you yeah all right so the next one you know tell me about tiberius <laughs> so uh -oh. i knew i was gonna make him blush on this one so for people that don't know tiberius is an alter ego of uh of elliot's that appears on his youtube channel it's a unique way to entertain and uh, to provide some counterpoints where did this come from i i love it personally because i think it's hilarious it's cheesy on like the best way where what um, is that do you know a person that was like tiberius like oh what is that so i i was working through like okay what do i need to do for the channel i was like i want to do a a showcase where i go through once a week and right now it's not once a week but, uh where i showcase one neo geo game i talk about it pricing the gameplay i grade it on a scale of one to five on how good i think it is and i was like okay i can be a talking head for 15 minutes on this and then i thought about like what if i made it kind of mission impossible and Originally, that was what it was, was Mission Neo Geo was kind of like this Mission, Mission Impossible theme. And that completely went haywire after the first episode. And I'm like, man, I need to figure out a character. So I was like, I want him in a, you know, like a blazer and a button up. And I want him to be kind of like this real uh, masterpiece theater kind of feel in the black and white. And he's got the Neo Geo games behind him. And I'm like, what's a name for him? Like Tiberius. So I played with it, you know, my first first video, and I had my I remember my uncle texted me as soon as he saw the video. He's like, "Dude, what the heck was that?" <laughs> I was like, yeah. "Oh, I'm." He's like, "I was like, well, what did you think?" He's like, "Man, I'm in tears right now. I'm in tears. You're a nut. You're crazy." That's funny. So then I was like, "Okay." And then like some of my friends, I let them see the video, and they were like, "Dude, what?" what is this this is hilarious so then, <laughs> yeah i was like what is this so tiberius like kind of came alive and they were like what's tiberius's last name and i was like his last name is co-host tiberius co-host <laughs> his last name Very nice. so it, it, it spawned out into this crazy just this every week thing to a point to where now I had people like, where's Tiberius? Like, we want to see Tiberius. And I'm like, what? Like, my my sister, like, and her, my nephew, he's, you know, he's like, going to be two. And she's like, hey, Uncle Tiberius is on the phone. Uncle Tiberius is on the phone. He's like, oh, oh. I'm like, what? And my friends yesterday, he's like, I come walk through the door. Tiberius is here. I'm like, oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. Like, everyone calls me that now. That's hilarious. And 
they were like, is that really how you act? I'm like, no, that's not how I act. It's just character. And my wife thinks she, she hears me doing this. And people are like, well, do you script all that? I'm like, I freestyle all that. Wow. All of it's on the fly on video. And then what I want to keep, I'll yeah. edit and then yeah. trim it down. But yeah, it just whatever what, comes to my head. What I love about it is it's a, in a way, when you create anything and you put it out in the world, there's always these trolls too. That, oh, yeah. Like if you say something about a Neo Geo game, <clears throat> there's always somebody going, no, this is what I think. Yeah. I love that you're you're almost willfully interjecting that with that character because sometimes he'll have like a counterpoint and it's almost like you're beating the trolls to the punch a little bit exactly it dude it's actually a really creative way of handling what you're putting out there in the world and people who love to criticize you're building in your own criticism because you know what people are going to say sometimes yep. and you can do it through that character it's genius it's genius and it's, and the funny thing about it is is like i'll have people that side with tiberius like 80% of the time. They think he's like your real twin or something? Yeah, they're like, oh, man, I Tiberius all the way. I'm Team Tiberius. Ness, you need to work on whatever. You t- Listen to what Tiberius has to say. And I'm like, what? No, you, you, you could tie into that. I mean, you could have T-shirts you sell Team Tiberius, Team Neo Ness. Oh, and man. What would, would be oh. hilarious is if you start getting invitations to cons for Tiberius and not you. You, I, you know what? Surprisingly enough, it's hard to stay in character with Tiberius I because <laughs> I, I'll i say something. Like the last video I did on the scammers, and I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to bring Tiberius in for this. And I normally don't do that, but I was cracking up at myself. I normally don't do that. I was in tears editing the portions of it. And I'm like, why am I so dumb? Like, <laughs> why am I doing this? It's weird. It's, it's so, so weird. weird. It's so corny, but, but it's it, awesome. it works. It separates it you. Works. It separates you. It's awesome. Thank there. You. Uh, Doug, I see your last question there. We're, we're probably going to hold off on that one before yeah, we get into the. Yep. Uh, I'm going to jump in the next one. While we're on the topic, we're going to jump from Tiberius to, and I know you've mentioned this before, but I got to bring it up. You have a unique segment, not just with Tiberius, that I've never seen before. And it combines barbecue and video games. Now, you show people how to prepare food, uh, and then while it cooks, you showcase a retro game and talk about its history. Mm-hmm. This is a genius mashup, by the way, that I've never seen done before. Do you plan to explore this format more in the future? Yes, and I. the reason why I stopped was I wasn't getting a lot of traction in terms of views with it. So That makes sense. That makes sense. I, yeah. I love the format, though. Yeah, like, I, I, uh, I thought it was good. I love to cook. Um, I'm always trying different things here. And I had people like DMing me on I, on Instagram like, dude, when's the next cooking show? I need yeah. another one. It looks so good. Yeah, and I'm going to try that game out too. And I'm like, oh, that's great. Um, I want to do it right where it's yeah. just that kind of video, that kind of content needs more flair. And then my editing skills aren't there yet. And I want to make sure that it's right there in your face and you're like, Oh, like you watch a clip on online and it's like, man, that looks good. And yeah. they've got the panning in, panning out and scrolling in. I want to do that. And, but also I need to, I mean, I can't just do barbecue the entire time. So, no, no. but, um, my wife wants to get me like one of those black stones and she has like a, a laundry list of, you know, meals that she wants me to cook on that thing. So I'm like, okay, oh, yeah. maybe I can do that too. Those are very, <laughs> those are very popular. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure a little bit of refinement can go a long way, but I, I sure. love, I love the concept of it. I think you're, you're onto something. I'm, I'm surprised like audience wise, you did probably didn't as many clicks, but you're right. It probably has something to do. especially when you do food, like there's a certain way yeah. you got to like present it to make yeah. it interesting. Yeah. You know? uh, Cause I love watching some of those things, but <clears throat> I watched like this one guy, uh chef, I don't know. He's just a chef and he rates other people doing food things and mm-hmm. he'll say 10 out of 10 or whatever. And it's funny because a lot of people in their kitchens, they like let, like when they're adding the ingredients, what they let it go too long. They don't do quick cuts. Yes. It, otherwise you're sitting there like waiting for them to like stir or cook, you know, and it's like where you need to almost be kind of choppy. Right, right? on. You just yeah. got to, yeah. Hey, it's pacing. It's pacing. Mm-hmm. Pacing. That's yeah. it. Well, I encourage you to like, at some point, I'm sure there's a lot of work in that. I encourage you to kind of like, lean into that again because i think that's a, oh yeah 
That's a great mashup. You know, like food and Thank games. You. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Got to eat. <laughs> you do. Well, and you're in Texas. Come on, man. You got to talk about how to barbecue, right? It's, um, yeah, that's, that was it. It was um, starting a video game collection and learning how to barbecue. Yeah, it was, that was it. If you don't mind me asking, did you did, did you, you grow? I know you moved recently. Mm-hmm. Like, did you grow up in Texas, or what part of the country did you grow up in? Uh, so my my dad was in television when he was alive. So we, I mean, he worked for you know ABC, um, Fox, CBS. So he worked for all those. So did you move around uh, a lot? Moved around a lot. They thought we were military brats, to be honest. Mm-hmm. As much as we moved, but um, he would go through a new TV affiliate, get a promotion, whatever, and he'd have to move. So. We pack up. I was born in Oklahoma and then moved around. So Texas, then Arkansas, then New Orleans for a little bit, and then Oklahoma, Colorado, where you know, I finished up. Colorado was the best. I loved Colorado. And then, you know, went to college and then ended here in Texas. And then my mom and sister are in Texas. So it's just, it's us and, of course, my family. And then I've got a mix of family around the country. But, yeah, that's Texas is home. You've got an eclectic blending of, of food experience then. That's really what, like, like the Southern, oh, yeah. but yet, yeah. It sounds like you've been all yeah. over. You've, you've tried all the barbecues then, I'm sure. Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Uh, barbecue, seafood, all that. That's awesome. That's really cool. That, that's, that's really neat. And I bet video games was a way for you. I think I saw in one of your prior interviews that was that, that was the way with you being almost a, not a military brat, but moving around so much. Was that your way that you connected with others every time you entered a new school and that sort of thing i mean was video Almost games your gateway to making friends as a kid every every friend that i made you know i mean because i mean moving around it's hard on a oh, kid yeah. you know trying to build new relationships and especially if you've been in one state for a year or two years and you've just accumulated this cool friend group and then you got to pack up and leave again yeah. um video games was it you know like hey do you have a super nintendo do you have a genesis yeah i got those like oh what games do you play Oh, I play that game. I love that game. And that's spirals down. And then we're at each other's houses playing, you know, on the weekends. And there, there's the friendship. That's um, awesome. That kind of spawned me to when I got to college and out of college, a lot of my high school friends I, I had lost t- touch with until Halo, the Halo and the online play. So that's how I kept in touch with a lot of my friends over the years was through video games. And they, they heard my daughter grow up over the years over, you know, online chat, you know, the days of her turning my Xbox off when she could barely walk and I'm getting popping back up and they're over there cracking up because she turned it off in the middle of battle. And I'm like, no, been there, (laughs) been there. I'm sure a lot of parents can relate. So it's, yeah, that and now it's it's funny too because my daughter's a gamer. I mean, if not the same games, but she plays a lot of games and she's created a lot of friends online. She's she's got a friend in New Jersey that we've met a couple of times. They've come here and we've gone up there, and awesome. she's got friends in the UK and you know they're FaceTiming and all this stuff. I'm like, the video games is just it's the broader reach. With online gameplay has been amazing stuff that we wish we could have had when we were growing up. Yeah, well, it's it's amazing to see now. Yeah, for us, we had to get in a room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. land parties, the land parties, man. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where it was at. And oh uh, yeah, yeah, or splitting the quad screen on an N sixty four for man, and I, right? oh, <laughs> man, you're taking me back. <laughs> I remember the uh, multi taps for the uh, Sony PlayStation. Yeah, oh, the multi taps, yeah. multi tap. I remember that, and I. I remember when I first started in IT, um, of course it was in university. So universities were like a little bit more loose with what you did. And after hours, we actually had a, um, a Counter-Strike server that we had hosted on campus. But what we did was we used the computer lab because it was already networked, right? Yeah. And we would all connect to the server hosted on campus. And it'd be all of us IT guys. And we would play, like here we worked all day. You know, I'm in my early 20s, you know. It, it's, oh, yeah. Dude, we just would play late into the hours and just play, you know, Counter Strike all the way through, man. It's just you had to get in a room. It was different, you know. But now, like my son, you know, he's uh, he, he's college now. He's actually going to school for game development. Um, oh, nice. But uh, yeah, he's he's going to Full Sail University and um, learning about you know 
the stuff I'm seeing him do, like with Unreal Engine 5, uh, his dream is to work for Bethesda. So we'll, we'll see if he makes it there. But he's a talented kid. But he, most of his friend community, it's funny, like, you know, his, he graduated last year. A lot of his mm-hmm. friends, they, they scattered, they go to college. Every night, man, he's on with them. They are still so tight because the video games, video, you're right. It keeps us together. You don't have to worry about a phone call or a text or maybe the only text is you getting on tonight. That's yeah. about it. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's such a, it's a great, great way to stay connected. It really it is. is. It's it awesome. really is. All right, Doug, I'm gonna let you round it out before we get into the rapid fire here. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you talking with us today. You know, as we look towards the future, if you haven't already completed your collection, uh, kind of what's next for you? Is there an end point or you're always collecting, always going to these shows, always looking for that something new or something in better condition than what you currently have? Oh, oh yeah. They, they just redid the for Doom Anniversary. They redid Doom 1 and 2 with reskin. Like, they're big into taking the old and then doing new versions of retro games. I love that they're doing that. And then when they do a partnership, with a company like Limited Run, then you get a physical release on top. I love that. I love yeah. that's like that's new and niche. And I think that's almost probably the counter narrative to what's going on with the digital space that maybe hopefully that will take off. I, to be honest, there's such an extensive library of games out there that I mean, if they said we're not creating a new video game ever again and they go back and say we're just going to oh. remake or remaster I'm in. all the classics. There's a bunch. Yeah. I'm cool. D- Doug, I'm perfectly cool with it. What was yours, Doug? Uh, it was a Command and Conquer. Is what you're so saying? I'm Ooh. waiting patiently for them to remaster uh, Red Alert Two. Mm-hmm. Their remaster Ooh. of the first Command and Conquer. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, I hope they do Starcraft, but I heard they're doing a first-person shooter of Starcraft. Yeah, Starcraft. I, don't think I was like, what are we doing? doing? Yeah, they're going the wrong way. We talked to our StarCraft buddy, and he said, uh, I wouldn't play that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he does like competition. Like, he likes, you know, they still do competitions with StarCraft. Yeah. And it's like, time. why would you shift from real time strategy and let's do a shooter? That doesn't make yeah. sense. I, the, the, um, I would say that then once I complete the Neo Geo, I'm done in terms of full sets. Okay. Like, I, I won't be going after anything else. I have friends that say, well, you're going to go after something else. Like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, Cons, yeah, I'll occasionally go. I don't need to be invited or anything like that. I just like going, the experience. Um, and then in terms of other other games or things, there's there's always going to be a handful of games. Like right now, I'm just trying to round off certain games that I don't have from my childhood that I'm still after. So really, once I have those and I've come to that place where, okay, I have everything that I want, I'll be good. And it's just more of things that hit me in the nostalgia feels that I would go after. But other than that, that's, that's pretty much it. I, w- I want to ask a follow up to that. Sure. It's, it's, it always comes up on a lot of channels and it's kind of controversial. We're open-minded. We don't have a lean either way. A lot of collectors are threatened by what's happening in the modern space with digital. Where do you stand on the trend? I mean, you, you're looking at, you know, the, the PS5 Pro just released, predominantly digital unless you buy the add-on uh, drive. We see this lean. You got Game Pass. You got streaming starting to come into it. How do you feel about the landscape about what's going forward? A lot of people concerned about Xbox may just completely get out of the console and become publisher. Um, where are you at with the future? Do you think that that has any type of an impact on the physical collecting side of things? What are your thoughts on where this is going modern-wise? as a follow-up i look at it in a couple of ways um i look at my daughter's generation they you know mind you there there are a handful of children her age that care about physical digital is there that's all they've ever known you steam, know they've had access steam to ea robots everything yeah. they've they've had it you know yeah. since they were born so it's just it's a completely different perspective for them I kind of classify our generation of gamers. I, I t- call them, I call this like the gaming boomers. <laughs> oh, <that's funny>. <laughs> we're like we're kind of like that because we're like, oh, you can't take away my, my retro. You can't do that. I'm like, well, I mean. You don't really own it. If you, you don't, don't really it. own it. You, I got to have the tangible item right here. Unfortunately, we're, we're moving towards a more digital world, and that's yeah. that we can't stop that. Now, I will say this. 
I do not like the fact that companies can hold certain games hostage. I don't like that. I don't like that. I understand that licensing agreements drop and fail and companies get exalted or, you know, acquired, all those things. At the end of the day, I know a business has to make money. Corporate's going to have stock prices that they have to get and shareholders and all that information. I understand all of that. However, the main core and base foundation of gaming is playing a game. Is it enjoyable? Does the consumer want to come back and play that game over and over again? If we lose sight of that, not only do we lose what's left of physical or from a a new generation perspective, from an older generation perspective, we're done. We're just going to play what we have. We're going to go after the old stuff and say, this was the best video games are ever going to be. I think there's still a lot of growing that can that can happen and i would hope that publishers developers companies out there would say look the people want a good quality game if you give us a good quality game it's going to be a lot easier for us to digest whether or not it's physical or it's digital but if you keep giving us crap of course we're going to be up in arms and say like i want my physical game because if it was crap and you pull it off the shelf after 2 weeks what was the point of it all? Yeah, right. Well, That's just at, my thoughts. Look at Concord. Exactly. Perfect example. That was crazy. It was barely, insane. Barely out two weeks, and then they yanked it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think there's a preservationist side of it. You are 100% right in that. I, I do look at, I, I think, where I get frustrated, because I lean digital, but that's because, uh, you know, I have all, I have, you know, an Xbox and I have a PS five is kind of my lean cause I like playing my living room. Uh, but I'm huge into, I've got, you know, PC gaming still. And for years I've been using steam and any mm-hmm. steam game I bought has not been taken away from me. Um, so far that I've seen in my, and I have a massive steam library, but, but what drives me nuts, both with Sony's streaming service and even with game pass, they'll give me a game as a part of the subscription I'm paying. And you're right. It's licensing. And then they'll just yank it away. Yeah. And I'm like halfway through it, you know, like, and then I'm as an older gamer, my time is valuable. I, I, I want to jump in and beat it. And if I'm in the middle of something, you're going to yank it away. And then that makes me feel like I got to buy it digitally or I got to go find the physical copy. So it's yeah. weird, this mode that we're in right now. So I'm not anti digital. I like digital. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's convenient, but then you have the storage issues and they, you know, unless you buy it, they can take it away if it's on a streaming service. So it's very nuanced what's going to happen as we move forward. You know. Can can I ask you two a question? Please. What were your thoughts on the PlayStation Five Pro? Oh, uh, I no, I didn't watch. I didn't watch. Mr. Go first. I didn't watch Mister Rightways. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, not worried about what. Well, he I only was. say because I saw his thumbnail and it looked like you got to buy this now. Now maybe that's not what he said. I haven't watched it. I love you, Stephen. Don't just. I just want to say that. I could be wrong about that. Um, I gave him crap, but okay. that's, that's is, is, is that is that what he said? Go buy it. So he 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 did buy it, okay. right? Um, I and the reason why I ask is because I've I mean the community's pretty split. I mean you have yeah. particular set of the community like oh I'm going after it. I have to have the best quality. Of course, I'm like best quality of what? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. what are we what are we doing here and it kind of goes back to the previous comment i was talking about in terms of like if you give us a quality game it doesn't matter what form factor we're playing it correct i did not purchase a pro yeah. i did not i don't see the value behind it i have a playstation 5 i will continue to use the playstation 5 yeah so to me it was about the price of entry and it, that too. it, it is the cost benefit scale and and I look at it the same as I look at a video card, right? I'm still mm-hmm. rocking a 3080 Ti, right? And I'm looking at a 4090. 50s are about to 5090s maybe. Yeah. Come right but here's my problem: a 4090 is still a thousand dollars, and I got to look at my performance with what 20 percent. You divide that out by dollars, you know. That's just the performance per buck starts to become a thing for me. That's where the practicality kicks in. And so my view on the pro was just that. Is that okay? Well, what am I getting? Um, okay, I, it upscales better ish, better load times. But you know, dude, 
I already put a four terabyte M.2 in it. I got tons of storage in the dang thing. Uh, and I have the original one, right? I don't even have the smaller one. And funny, I told my brother, so, you know, if I if my PlayStation were to die, because I have the OG 5 yeah. that came out, I probably would get the slim one because he got one of the slim ones. I loved how tiny it was and they did better with air cooling. And I thought, you know what? I'd almost would go with the smaller version than I would a pro. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. because you look at the cost of what am I getting for what I'm spending and for that amount of money, it just didn't make sense to me from a total cost of ownership, especially when I know at some point in 24 months, there'll be a PS6, you know, uh, maybe. Now, it's funny, though, they talk about GTA coming out and the pro. Uh, don't even run it. Not, not, at, not at 60 frames a second. They're saying yeah. it's like 30 frames. A second. So I'm like, eh. So I, if I look ahead games, I'm looking forward to like GTA. I'm just like... If I'm going to be locked at 30 frames, I'm going to play on my regular PlayStation. Yeah. And yeah. we have this conversation all the time. Sometimes I can't tell the difference between 4K and 8K, man. Like my eyes. It's, we like, can't. We're, yeah. no, we're, we're at that point now where it's like, what are we really doing here, folks? Like you yeah. sitting here telling me you could tell that that leaf fell off the tree and yeah. you saw it hit the ground and it caused a ripple in the water in this game. Really? Yeah. Are we really saying that? <laughs> Well, and you saw that you saw the side by side pictures with. Like, I couldn't tell a difference. Me neither. They look the same to me, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, like The Last of Us is such a gorgeous game. It's a great game, yeah. And so is God of War. The thing is, yeah. I played all of that on my regular PlayStation, and it was gorgeous. Yeah. Like, do I need it to be even more gorgeous than gorgeous? I don't know. It's like, I don't know. So that's my that's my take, Doug. I didn't mean to. You and I talked no, about I it. Mean, What's your I take on it? said everything i need to say it's kind of like uh the iphone se you know it's oh like, yeah here's a side version while we're waiting for the uh, playstation 6 it's like a half step and yeah my thought yeah is, you're right like 4k 8k whatever k is after that you know <laughs> our eyes i'm not a doctor and they can only detect so much so yeah do we need to start upgrading our eyes like we upgrade our graphics cards stuff like that cyberpunk okay. And even there, I mean, if you're talking about AK, you're going to have to get an AK TV. Yeah. And then AK and, HDMI cables, like yeah. high, uh, bandwidth, uh, yep. or not bandwidth, but yeah. Data. Yep. And if you got a long, long run, like I do in my living room, I got to get a 50 foot optical HDMI cable just to. Oh my. Like, dude, it's just like, yeah. Where it's never ending. And, and I think it goes back to what you said. Do, am I enjoying the games that I play? Do they play well? And do they look good? Hmm? Yeah. I don't know. You you have to find that that mark. But I I do I do respect people that want the best because to me like yes. I'm that way. Like you know, when it comes time to upgrade my PC, whatever. You ask Doug. I'm always you know whether it's a really expensive sure mic or my massive flex folding uh you know 50 inch monitor. Like I'm gonna go big if I'm gonna invest and upgrade. But I don't want to always keep riding that rail because it gets really expensive. And yeah, to always be doing that. That's a great question, by the way. Man, we should have him interview us. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm going to go back just for a little bit as far as the digital aspect. My thoughts on that are, look way back in the day at the big box PC games. You know, you get a little bit of swag, some stickers. You get yeah. these big, glorious, beautiful maps. And now with digital, you get the game. Yeah. There's nothing extra unless you buy a special edition, obviously. But there's nothing like the good old days of getting that uh, physical media, physical uh, collecting stuff. Reading the manual. That's Remember reading the manual? The As manual, a kid? Yeah. Remember you oh, get the... absolutely. I read well, reading the manual. the manual told you things she didn't even know could yep. exist. Like yep. two players on uh, Duck Hunt? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. The, the collector's editions now, to me, oh. for some, for some games, yeah. are a complete joke. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Like, it's... You give me a disc, and the disc is basically the code. It's not the game. And I'm like... Yeah. What? Why? Yeah. What? What happened? Where did we go? Yeah. What did we do wrong here? Like. Yeah. Like I'm paying how much money for a lot? Yeah. For a, a, a lanyard and some stickers yeah. and plastic right. little and, statue. Yeah, a little a patch that I can sew on to something that I'm probably not going to wear. Like, what, yeah. what, what are we doing? Like, it is weird. Yeah. Unfortunate, there, well, but there are still some good ones. I think the God of War one was pretty good with the hammer. Are. That was good. Well, and you have companies like Limited Run that yes, they're taking stuff that's digital and then they'll do a physical release. And sometimes they'll do. I saw. I love watching like Metal Jesus 
channel. Mm -hmm. He always does great unboxings of things like that. Yeah. You know, Radical Reggie. There's some big YouTube guys out there that are doing some really good stuff, and they'll always showcase like what Limited Run is doing. And mm -hmm. I love how they're keeping that alive because it's almost like they're trying to make it quality again. You know, a lot of those collector editions. I think we're going to need. We're gonna. I mean, there's a couple of companies like that, but we're we're going to need them in the future for sure, That's especially so for like I. I was really hurt that Black Myth Wukong didn't get a physical release. Yeah. That That's, game was definitely worth a physical yeah. release. Yeah. Like, I wanted a statue or something. I'm like, yeah. I need the Monkey King in my game room somewhere. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. You know, it's funny you bring that up because there's companies that are doing unique things like that. Um, I, I can't remember. I'm going to probably get is It's not Black Isle. They keep, there's a company that uh, keeps redoing retro games. They redid um, System Shock. Night Dive, Night Dive Studio. The main reason why I bought a PlayStation 5 when it came out was when Sony announced they were doing a, a, re, a remaster of Knights of the Old Republic. Oh my God. That's, yeah. like, yeah. that's like my it's a great top game. five favorite game on Xbox. I mean, I play it once a year, even yeah. to the day. I play it once a year. Yeah. And when I saw the trailer with Revan, I was like, I'm sold. I got to get a PS5 right now. No game. And then they were like, hey, the game's been canceled. I'm like, oh, I know. no. <laughs> that was so frustrating. And then the, the Switch release was weird. Yeah, it, it was. Like glitched or had weird. They changed parts of the game. You're better to yes. go back and play it on original they, release. They, I, I had, uh, my buddy is at, um, his wife, they're at Retro Rick's uh, convention this weekend. Yeah. yeah. And he sent me a picture of uh, the, 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 switch box set of knights of the old republic like, man do you want this i was like no i'm good because it just i mean yeah i'd have it in the collection but it just that okay. version of the game wasn't good the xbox version had bugs the okay. steam version mm -hmm. with what like even for it was rough knights, at first wasn't it it was very rough at first yeah. but the mods and you know mm -hmm. that the community really fixed that game up even the second version the second game um they added all the deleted scenes from uh, Obsidian yeah. and all that stuff that I played through that. I was like, oh, this is a great game. It's such a great game. You know, I'm embarrassed to admit a spiritual connector to Knights of the Old Republic is uh, Jade Empire. I've never, I love Jade Empire. I've never played it. Oh, it's so good. This is like it's when Doug so told me he never played Skyrim and I got all over him. So it's i actually have a graded copy of jade empire dude it's in my back catalog i will play it i promise i know i have it i know i own it in at least digital somewhere i'm sure i do it, it's uh, on game pass oh when i got game pass so i just need to yeah. do it so it's good right i mean it's it's yeah. good it, okay. it's 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 um let me think what's a what's a good it's got some nights back when bioware could do no wrong yeah right they were awesome it's, they were the best. So it's got elements of Knights of the Old Republic meets kind of like a martial arts. And then the, the language they've got, they're speaking a language. It sounds like it could be Chinese, but I think they said it, they made language up in the game. Okay. But it's not Japanese. Um, it's not like Ghost of Tsushima where it's Japanese based. No, it? no, no, okay. it's not. Okay. No, sure. it's, it's definitely a game. If it got a remaster, oh man, <sighs> You're it would right. be amazing. They could go back and just, have bangers just keep all remastering. day long i, I just here's my money here you go oh, dude i bought the system shock one i love the first one i played oh yeah dude and the redoing the bioshocks i'll play them again yeah. because oh, yeah. they're just the first ones were so chef kiss they were so good loved them all right dougie what do you think, man? You ready to throw some rapid fire questions at the tail? Yes, oh, man. man. I, I, uh, I, uh, yeah. We really appreciate the time. We don't want to hold you up too long. We got about 10 or so questions. We're just going to kind of. We're going to alternate. Here. Yeah, we're going to oh. rapid fire. Now, you can give your answer. So, and the reason why we do this is because of the Wired Nerdy podcast. Yes, we love video games, but we, we love all things like. Huh? That's all why things we're called. Nerdy. That's yeah. why we're Wired Nerdy. So, yeah. we want to get a feel for you as to where you stand on some of these things. We're open opportunity. We're non-judgmental. We have, so just so you know, there's no wrong answer. Uh, but Doug and I are going to alternate and take turns for each one of these. Uh, and Doug, I'm going to have you start with the, the very first one, man. And feel free to elaborate if you want to defend your decision because people in okay. comments may, you know how people can be. I don't, oh, have yeah. a, I don't have a Tiberius. I have Doug. He can. Right. 
you know, <laughs> I'll have to elaborate on the first one. Just give my take, but Marvel or DC? Oh I'll man, kind of give my answer after you. I'll uh, take turns. Yeah, uh, yeah. Live action or, or animated? Ooh. Ooh, let's start with live action. Just the main <sighs> stuff there. Live action. I'm giving it to Marvel. Of course. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Animated DC. You can't touch it. They look. No. They're awesome. I, in agreement you know i look at marvel and it's similar to the dreamcast but it's sony you know they've done such a great marketing campaign and the infinity wars and the whole avenger series they just blew it out of the water oh, yeah but dc dc's got some hits like the uh, snyder cuts yeah i like this i love the snyder cut i did too yeah. it's controversial now I'm, i i collected both when i was a huge comic collector mm-hmm. but i'm a dc guy i told you superman's my guy I am so excited, but yet nervous about James Gunn taking over Superman. Um, it, it, it looks, I hate the suit. I hate the suit where they showed I it. Too. But, but they said it's set in the 1970s. It has a lighter feel. They're going for more of a Christopher Reeves 80s. I'm going to, I'm going to be open minded about it. But I will say this, guys. I, and I told Doug before this, I don't know if you've seen this yet, Nest. Have you watched Penguin? On, no. I started it last night. Dudes, you got to watch it. It is. Oh, so it's good. Oh, my, my wife, like both, we were just chills. It's so good. It's like good. the Sopranos set in Gotham. And Ooh. it is so good. And they keep saying like he's going to win awards and I can see why. So if, if they can take the momentum and the feel of what they're doing in the Penguin show and move it into Batman too, which I wasn't, I liked the Batman movie with Robert Pattinson. It wasn't my favorite. It was it was good. It, you know, I've seen worse. But like, if they can keep that momentum going and build on that, um, of course, the Joker two movie sucks. But we kind of knew that it would. Nothing but bad things about it. <sighs> what Only they should have just things, stopped. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm a DC guy, but I got to give it to agreeing with you. Marvel just has done live action better. Yeah. DC though, they crushed the anime like spot all on. Them. All of them. Did have you, on the anime bit? Have you watched uh, Terminator Zero? Zero? I have not. I need to check that out. I just uh, finished I, it. It's good. I heard that they greenlit a uh, season two, though. Oh, thank God! Watch it. It's so good. It's it's really good. Okay. All right. You know, so along the same lines, yeah, they released uh, Tomb Raider on Netflix as well. I haven't yep. seen that. I need to check that I out too. I haven't seen it. Yeah. See, there's so much. I, I don't have enough time. <laughs> All right. Next rapid fire. Star yeah. Trek. Or Star Wars? Star Wars. Ooh. All day. Like, wow. I've dedicated my, my office. My home office is Star Wars themed. Oh. Yeah, so I'm a big Star Wars fan. Like, give me the root of that. Like, where you, like episode, like, where to start for you? Uh, you know, new, A New Hope? Or are you uh, an episode one guy? Like, where, where's that uh, for you? A New Hope was my first one. And the only reason why was because, what, Phantom Menace was getting ready to come out. My friends wanted me to, to you got to watch New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. So I was like, okay. Went down the, the rabbit hole, watched them. Um, I was like, okay, this is cool. I didn't get into it, into it yeah. until Knights of the Old Republic. So when game I played stage. the game and I was just, I was the Jedi. I was the character yeah. then it clicked playing through it. Yeah. And then that that solidified Star Wars for me. I went down. I, I read the books, which now are legends, unfortunately. Uh, books by Timothy Zahn. Uh, oh, yes. Dude, those novels are so good. Amazing. How Amazing feel, novels. How, how do you feel Disney's doing with the IP right now? How, how do you feel where it's at? I feel the writing is sloppy. Um, they had a lot of missed opportunities with the the latest set of movies. Um okay. If, if I had it my way, like, it's fine that Ray's a Jedi. Um, Finn should have also been a been Jedi. A Jedi. Um, I think the, 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 the love scene or whatever kiss with her and Kylo Ren was a complete joke. It came out of nowhere. Um, yeah. The Palpatine the bloodline thing was, what, what are we doing? Lame. Uh, yeah. So it, it, if, if I could rewrite the script... If anything, it would be okay. Yeah, Luke can still be off, yeah. but it's because he's been trying to master the Force to for this new threat, this new threat that's in dark space, and then they have to bring him back. And then now all these new Force sensitives are going to learn under him. Yeah. 
yep. you know, all these kind of things. They could have gone a multitude of different ways, but um, yeah, it's it's unfortunate. The shows, Mandalorian, pretty good, um, pretty good season two. Oh my goodness, yeah. Like, yeah. that was amazing. Um, Ahsoka, mm-hmm. eh, it was all right. I loved Obi Wan, and I heard they're, was good. They're doing Obi-Wan a second, good. and what I loved about it, they finally. They finally showed Darth Vader in the suit like they did at the end of Rogue One, where he's, yes. a, bad, where he's a badass, right? Um, and I, the hype scene was amazing. That was amazing. Yes. And I love, I love that Hayden Christensen is getting the love that he deserves. He, he's yeah. done great. Yeah. I, I do. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel so. I did not watch Acolytes. I heard horrible things. It, I fought through the pain, watched it, and... Was it bad? It wasn't good. Okay, got it. Well, it, it wasn't good. I think the cringy thing is like when they were interviewing the actors, they knew nothing about the universe because they would ask them, well, light side or dark side. And they're like, well, there really isn't a light side. There's no good or bad. I'm like, yeah, that's the D that's the, that's the Disney talking. Like it, yeah. they, they have to get away from that. Yeah. There's a, yeah, I well, can go down this dark hole with I all know. this stuff. <laughs> well, and they also like, I saw one actor was like, you know, Anakin blew up the death star and everybody's like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. So, they should have at least educated them on. Yeah. Do your research. If you're going to play the character, like do your research. Well, and it makes you wonder, like, is that where the misstep is? They didn't do the research in the universe. And I don't know. You got to be careful with you do. I- IPs like this. You, you got to yeah. be careful. So. All right. Doug, next yeah. controversial topic. So uh, Apple or Android. And uh, I, I made a big change a uh, week, a couple weeks ago. But uh, are you uh, Apple or Android? I am Apple. I've been Apple for a while. I was Android at one point, um, and then all my friends were like, well, man, you got this bubble stuff, man. We got to, I can't have you with this green bubble, man. You got to, you got to switch. I'm like, okay. And then I've been Apple the entire time. I, I really don't care either way. It's just, you know, it's the whole getting it day one thing. I'm like, Apple's not releasing enough features for me to be going out here and getting the new iPhone 29 or whatever that's out. Yeah. So year by year. Yeah. Where they're they're backing off yearly releases now. They announced that last week. They need to. They need to. I yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, I think it is too. Yeah. You know, Keith's laughing over here because I've always been that bubble guy on Android, and I've talked yeah. so highly <laughs> of Android for so long, and then I took a taste of Apple, and I'm like, ooh, my battery lasts longer than five minutes. Ooh, I don't have to charge my phone every night. So. Yeah. I've recently uh, been converted, uh, drinking the Kool Aid, and it's been good so far. Yeah, so, welcome, welcome. Like, yeah, so yeah, well, welcome to the cult. That's what I tell. Yeah. Hey, don't get me wrong. I, I love Android. You know, in our industry, you know, we're both in technology. Mm-hmm. I love all technology, and I think there's a purpose and a place. And I was an Android guy for a while, but like I had to troll Doug because we went to a Comic Con in Kansas City. It was bad, and, and dude, like I had used my phone GPS to get there, streaming music all the way while we're talking all day long. This dude, he had a battery pack. How many times you charged that day? I was ready to go. I had a battery pack. I had wow. a charger, like, and I was this trolling is normal Android life. And I was I trolling him because we were taking footage for the podcast and interviewing people and like taking pictures and like we were using our phones heavy. I didn't charge. I got home. I remember I texted him. I'm like, I'm at thirty percent, and I hadn't even plugged in all day. And he was like, You jerk. <laughs> wow. <laughs> With my uh, different color bubble too. Yes, yes. So he made the leap recently, but uh, to me, I like the no, I like the no, no fuss. You can customize Android great, but I like the no fuss on it. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, you're stranded on an island. If you can take only one video game with you on that deserted island, which one would it be? And let's just assume you have solar power for electricity and what you need to play. I don't know how many times I've been asked this question. It's so hard. Only one game. You can you can take some liberties with it. I mean, you have a Steam Deck. I don't know. <laughs> if it's one game, I'll let it be a series. Ooh. Okay. And surprisingly, it's it's out of the norm, but um, it would be Mass Effect. Oh, I love it. Very good. Because it's good. depth. Multiple depth, endings. their story, and you could replay as a different character, and however you make your choices could deviate. I love it. I love it. And there's a lot to play through in the storyline with three yeah. of them. Versus yeah. if you said Skyrim, kind of like it, but 
the Mass Effect, you have three distinct uh, yeah. chapters. I like it. Man, solid answer. Jeez. For staying up late, you're coming in hot, man. That's good. <laughs> Watching all that football. All right, Doug, you're up. Hey, as we look at technology, you know, things have advanced way beyond our uh, thoughts and dreams since uh, we are little kids. You know, as we look at today, what is like your most favorite technology or going back in the past? What has kind of revolutionized the way you do things or the way that the world do, does things? Technology wise, I know that's kind of a broad. What's your question. favorite technology? Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. Man. That's a really good question. I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Um, I don't think I have a favorite technology, to be honest, just because it's, I guess you don't, I don't think of it that way just because everything's so integrated now. Like if I, if I were to ask myself, you know, 20 years ago, I mean, technology wise, it probably would have been a video game console or something like that. Right. Yeah. If we're removing video games from it, I, I would probably say my phone. Yeah. It's just there. It's easy. It's accessible for everything for the most part. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. That's good. You're right. Because the lines are blurred. Like, yeah. Because you can play video games on your phone now, too. So it's yeah. not exclusive to your console. Yeah. I think the only thing that'll change it is what's going on in the, uh, you know, you know, different spaces with AI, which we'll get to here in a moment. Yeah. One of the questions. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know, I have to agree because a phone shouldn't really be called a phone anymore. It's a no, it's a computer. Yeah. Yeah. My, really. my wife calls my phone the tablet. Will you turn your tablet down? I'm like, do why you, is it? Do you have a Pro Max? Is that why? I do. I do. My and wife that's why says she the same it. thing. My wife too. She's like, put your, put your iPad away, Keith. Put your iPad away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm old. I, I I need bigger screen for my. I'm the same. I'm the same way. I'm like I gotta have the bigger screen. I need That's to see right. it. I've been noticing my font size keeps going up every. Mine year. too. Mine too. And now that I can use uh, AirPods as hearing aids, we're just going full oh, on in, man. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't want anybody sneaking up on me. You know? No, you don't. No, you don't. All right. Next one, number six, uh, fictional universe, which you kind of hinted at maybe what you may say here. If you could drop into any fictional universe from books, comics, movies, or video games, which would you choose, and what role would you play in them? Dragon Ball and I would be a Saiyan. Dang! He didn't even think twice. Yep. No hesitation. Yep. Wow. All right. Yeah. He's I, I like it. I love martial arts um, and uh, grew up watching Dragon Ball since I was a kid. Yeah. I was in Power Rangers and all yeah. that, all that stuff. I actually just found a Dragon Dagger couple, like a month and a half ago. Is, is that the one that's in like the a whistle box. as well? Yeah, yeah, it was the flute. Yeah. The flute. The flute. And Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. It's, um, it had a lot, it, that had like, I did that in my video, but that's like a huge, like, huge milestone for me just, just because my mom never got me one. <laughs> and I had to beat her Pac-Man score to get one. I couldn't beat it. So when I finally found one, I, messaged her i was like mom oh, look what i found she's like did you be what my score it? that's exactly what she said <laughs> she was like hey you can't open that until you beat my high score i'm oh, like what i love it your mom <laughs> i should have your mom on the podcast she sounds awesome she's she's she man she's ruthless in games man she's I ruthless <laughs> i love it i love it it's awesome all right doug you're up buddy hey uh what superhero do you admire the most or and which villain do you find most compelling? Ooh. Um, hero would be um, okay. Let me let me go back. Let me do the villain first. Okay. Yeah. Good Lord. Okay, y'all got me on this one. <laughs> some heavy hitters. Yeah, some heavy hitters. Um, the villain would probably be... Man, who was the villain that I just despised the most? Like, I couldn't stand them. I'm like, oh, gosh. Uh, Homelander. Oh. From the boys. Absolutely, yeah. Dude. I oh man just when he's up in that plane yeah. like um they went yes when he did I was like oh you I son of a gun, gun you like, nope. uh, my wife and I were talking about it. do you think uh, I think his name's Anthony Starr please do you think he's gonna mm -hmm. be 
poor guy's going to be typecasted and never get a good guy role. That poor dude plays that role so well. Do you think everybody's just going to hate him? <laughs> I, I think a lot of times where I see folks get typecast in roles like that and they end up playing those roles multiple times in different shows and movies, they're like polar opposite of that individual in real life. I'm sure but he like is. people are yeah. just so stuck on yeah. oh I can't yeah. stand you. He's like, I'm really a nice guy, yeah. you know. Really, you know, it's just kind of crazy. It's like uh, Joffrey um, from Game of Thrones or Yeah. The, oh the, the sl- ooh. Yeah. 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 Or uh, sl- mm, that's another one. Uh who is it? Who's had a, the Slytherin in Harry Potter? Uh, oh, um uh, Draco? Mal- Malfoy. Malfoy, yeah. yeah. Uh, my my daughter met him at a Comic Con. He's so sweet and nice. Yeah, I heard he's a really cool, dude. But you know, poor guy, <sighs> typecast. <laughs> uh, hero wise, I'll say who was the one that really just put it all on the line, gave it all up for everybody. I'm trying to think. I mean, I could say Superman, yeah. which Superman tends to resonate with me. And I would probably say I love Christopher Reeves' Superman a lot, but Henry Cavill's Superman. He's my boy. He he he, he, he was more He's a gamer. down to earth, if you will, right? Yeah, I like And the him. way the script yeah. was written, it was like – and in the fact that he had to, like – at this point spoiler yeah. alert yeah. uh uh when zod came to the planet and then it was the that choice. family or zod and that scream yeah i felt that i know i'm like the pain that he yeah. felt like i had to take a life to mm-hmm. save someone and i was in a situation where i couldn't and it was it was one of his it was the last of his kind and it, yes what it meant for him i am truly alone now yes and that and yes I know, like that like i get goosebumps just talking about it man like that know. that yeah. right there is yeah. like I had to sacrifice the last of my people to save the people that adopted yeah. me, yeah. and then I'm sworn to protect. Yeah. But I'm also going against my principles of not killing anyone. Yeah. It's just this huge, massive conflict, and that scream, that roar, was like, yeah. oh my god! And then Lois comes in to embrace him, so and it's good. just like, I know that's and the thing is, yeah. Superman gets so much crap, but he's my boy because he. Like he is a god, and he could be. Yeah. Like, he could be. He, Homelander is what Superman could choose to be. Yes. Like if you're a god and you can do anything, and that's why I love in you know in the the fighting series, the video game uh, fighting mm-hmm. series where they have Superman bad. Um, that's kind of the alternate world of that. I love that he chooses not to be. Yes. The, yeah. That is the true strength. I don't know. I yes. Love that. And then that scene in that movie, Man of Steel, so good. It's just such an amazing movie. Yep. You know, right. I'm going to crush the moment, but I got to throw some love to my boy, uh, Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> you know, he's a. Oh, we'll move on. Never you mind. Wait a minute. You, you know, he's a Sith, right? I mean, uh, we'll, we'll cut that out. No, no you got to leave that in. No, that stays. That, that, that stuff stays, man. All right. <laughs> I think it's your turn. I'll be quiet for a little bit. Uh, okay. All right. Here we go. Number eight. Artificial intelligence. What do you think the future of AI will be? Will it be Star Trek or Skynet? Skynet. Oh, God, really? Dang. I've been saying it for the longest time. The, the, the scary... Th- okay, so working in IT, and everyone's very low-key about it. You know, we hear it and everything, the, the marketing verbiage, all that stuff. Humans are the part of the equation that we can't equate the variable to. And what I mean by that is like, we are our own worst enemies. Absolutely. Humans use technology. We become extremely lazy because of technology. We rely on technology for everything that we do now versus how it used to be. Now I get it. Speeds everything down. It speeds everything, automation, all those things. We need those things. Now. The problem is, is that, we are dealing with a technological force that we just our brains can't fully comprehend the realm of what we're trying to approach yeah we're going to have 
limiters and governors and blocks that are going to keep everything in lock. But when you start talking about a consciousness, a, a, a technological consciousness that's going to learn on its own thousands and thousands of times faster than human brain can or comprehend to where it's learning its own languages. It's training its own algorithms to where it doesn't need human, you know, intervention anymore. That scares me. Yeah. When it reaches, and when it is a black box and it reaches beyond it's a, our understanding yes. of how it functions. Yes. And it's, it's not necessarily the companies out there, the, the good, the good folks that are actually, you know, building healthy, good AIs to help, the, you know, us, it's the bad actors out there yeah. that are utilizing the AI that I'm more frightened about because those are the individuals that set something loose that can't be put back in the box. Mm. That's just my thought process. Maybe I'm too sci-fi, no. if you will, but it's, I, my thought process on a lot of things in life is like, I tend to lean towards the negative side of it first you're, to come to a conclusion. So that way I can prepare myself. You're a skeptic. And then when the positive outcome comes, yeah. I'm just happy about it. Okay. That's it. That's but good. the logical thought process is you have to understand like, yeah, everyone's talking about this positive outcome from AI perspective, yeah. which is great. We're not talking about yeah. the negative side of it because there's still a lot of people that don't understand technology in general. It's, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Doug, you understand more than you give yourself credit for. Don't use your hand. Right. What are you, you know, I've got two IT professionals here and talking about AI, you know, we've talked about AI a lot on the show for two seasons now. I see the positive things, but like you said, bad actors, it's just like uh, I'm in law enforcement, you know, there's good people. And then there's those that uh, no matter how many laws, and this is a whole nother podcast, how many laws, how many rules you're going to make, they're never going to follow the rules. So you look at, like the three laws of robotics. If we have a entient, uh, like an AI person walking around, you give them the three laws of robotics. I know that's a very general thing, but that's so simple to break is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tool. And I always say it. It's like uh, a hammer can build a house, but it can also kill someone. It depends on who's wielding it. And I do think you are hundred percent right. My concern I don't have a problem with AI as a tool. I have a problem with our ability to adapt as yes. fast as the tool does. Look how long yes. it's like, we're already like reeling at the impact of social media in our kids in screen time. Like we haven't adapted as humans to being connected in the way that we are. Right. Yep. And so now AI, Doug and I talk about all the time. We will go back and look at the podcast and We'll look at like where we were six months ago. It's accelerating so fast. I worry about our ability to adapt with that technology. We don't have it. We don't have it. No, so. we don't. I think kind of going back to a particular game, I think that's why I like Mass Effect so much. That's the fundamental question, isn't it? It's the fundamental yeah. question, right? Because, yeah. you know, you're talking about, you know, what maybe mm -hmm. a couple hundred years into the future and the human race is... Mm -hmm. utilized artificial intelligence in such a way yep. that they've learned how to, you know, space flight and travel and all these things. But the real basis of the story was is there was already civilizations that had integrated AI and it failed and it destroyed their civilization and because they didn't, mm -hmm. everything is in a constant reboot to the point of the universe is secretly run by an artificial intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Because it grew and it learned, and now it's trying to solve its own equation of why do these mm -hmm. beings live? Why it's trying to solve its own mm -hmm. its own enigma of an equation, mm -hmm. and I think that's just the deeper story of it. I mean, there's still some humanity in that game, but it's it's kind of cool, you know, playing these games, looking at these movies, and reading these books. Mm -hmm they all have a very similar approach on how they're bringing this doomsday kind of feel, but there is a baseline understanding to say like, look, th this stuff could happen. Maybe not in our lifetime. Yeah. Like Where does not far fetched, yeah. but it, it could happen. Yeah. You ever watch, Stories come from somewhere. You ever watch black mirror? Oh man. Black mirror is so good. So good. Great show. But that's, it's, that's what 
a lot of those are cautionary tales about and where technology goes. Yeah. That's Black Mirror is only scary for those who actually understand that what you're looking at is a literal mirror Ugh. because that stuff can actually happen. Oh, absolutely. All, many of them. And I remember my wife would say like, is that, I'm like, actually we can, we can do that. Yeah. Now. Like I remember when I watched the episode still stuck with me was called Metalhead. It was all in black and white and it was yeah. where the robots are like, yes, it's like those robot dogs that they've made at Boston dynamics are chasing that person and they're stuck in a tree and it's solar powered. So the thing doesn't give up. It may go into a rest mode. Like, that is so legit today. Yeah. Like, oh, man, creepy, creepy stuff. Very. So, man, good. That was a good one. <laughs> Jeez. All right, Doug, number nine. As we look at uh, video games having uh, familiar sounds, you know, 56K modems make beautiful sounds, takes us back to our childhood and stuff. Uh, console boot up screens, you know, so many uh, consoles did it right. To uh, kind of start you off, my favorite uh, boot up screens, boot up sounds, animations would have to be the Dreamcast, where it swirls mm -hmm. around, swirls around. And then, of course, the PS1. You know, when we first turned on that PS1, PS2, the noise coming in. So, for you, what just like, oh, yeah, this is it. This is the best uh, kind of sound, brings me back to great memories? PlayStation. It's just that, that, yeah. PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2. Yeah. Well, actually, no. PlayStation 1 all day. PlayStation 1 all day. Like, they do. Yeah. Just a great sound. Yeah. Yeah. It sends a chill down the back here. It's oh. fine. Like, oh, I'm about to get into the game. Let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. I've They were so good. I love those chime. I'd say my, mine was, uh, and it was on the Sega CD. They did the choir that would sing Sega, Sega, but they, yeah. but they did it in different, depending on the game. Sometimes like Sonic would do something different at the beginning of the game. Like they always changed the boot up, but they always had that Sega sound, whether it was a sports game or the Terminator game. I like the variants that they did on the Sega CD and that sound. I always thought that was kind of a cool take on it. Can, um, yeah. can, can I ask you a, a fire question of myself to you too? Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What is the most iconic game theme video game thing any just one game to you two Ooh, Ooh yeah. that's heavy theme as in like a story trope or like an element the in song the actual theme song oh, i'm sorry you're talking yeah. about music yeah um, i think it's gonna take me a minute okay so you're gonna have to break it up into eras so yeah. to me, if you're going to go um, retro, old school, I, you got to give it to the, the original NES Mario song to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to lean into um, Final Fantasy when you get into that 90s with some of that Ooh. soundtrack, if, yep. if you're going to go modern, I'm sorry, I have to do a mic drop with Skyrim and Jeremy Souls. Now, I know there's controversy around Jeremy Soul, the composer, because he got in trouble with some stuff, but he may not be back for Elder Scrolls. The soundtrack to uh, the Elder Scrolls series to me is just mm -hmm. absolutely gorgeous and epic. And that's hard to say because there's some really good ones. That, like Assassin's Creed has an amazing soundtrack. So I, I have to break it up into eras because I think it's hard to compare the Mario theme to like the soundtrack to Skyrim. Yeah. That's, that's my take. Doug, what do you think? Okay. Uh, you know, not to say uh, that, Keith, you're a little bit older than me, but... I and I got the great uh, my friend. Yeah. So I've got to start on Super Nintendo, like uh, Legend of Zelda. So oh, back in music. Forgot and about then, it. Oh. Um, I, I got to bump up to PS1, PS2. So Twisted Metal, uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Dang, like, he's just some classics. He's, classic. You're classic. squashing me. I and, love it. Uh, I'm, I'm moving ahead in modern times. Uh, well, not modern times. Metal Gear Solid amazing uh soundtrack oh my really gosh I you got one of mine with uh skyrim skyrim you, it's like a walking uh simulator <laughs> along with uh and you'll have to help me keith the uh baby delivery like he's on your chest death stranding death I'm sorry. stranding yeah uh, baby delivery so no i know yeah. what you mean but death stranding you. yeah hideo uh, kojima yeah, if I yeah said you got right. it metal yep. suit metal Gear solid uh, so season. that's uh, that's my travel through uh, the generations there wow, wow. okay 
What okay. About what about you? I, I will. That. That's good. You 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 gave me. I mean, the Metal Gear Solid. Like personally, Metal Gear Solid Two for me was like the theme. Excellent. Oh, yes. When you come in, boot up screen. Um, Halo. Oh, just yeah. classic. Halo, Halo just gets me hyped. Such a I might not even play. It's just like yeah. You play that, and I think I saw a meme where there was this choir at a church, mm-hmm. and they were singing the Halo theme, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is so amazing!" Yeah. Um. Uh, Final Fantasy X yeah. was was really good. Mm-hmm. Even the battle music, and then a classic um, honorable mention is the Street Fighter Two character select screen oh, music. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, yep. that's awesome! Wow, you guys like, like you guys came out heavy swinging on that one. I love it. <laughs> Dang, you know I've always wanted to. I can never catch them. Have you ever been, either of you, to one of those concerts where they play video game music, yes, like an orchestra? Have. You have? I've not. I have. And it, it was, was it good? Amazing. Uh, I'll look it up uh, here, but uh, I went to uh, local art University of Missouri, Jesse Hall. Oh, they did it. They had the full orchestra. Oh, they played so everything from Halo to uh, Kirby. I think they had. Oh stuff. wow! Did they have a choir uh, when they did? Up. Did they have a choir for Halo and everything? They did. Yes. I'm so jealous. So let me look uh, that up. Oh man, I've always wanted to go. It's been on a bucket list of mine. I had a friend that went in St. Louis, and he said what they did. When they did Halo, they actually played on a massive screen, Mass Effect, Halo, Assassins. They would play the intros and they played them live. And while so you're watching the game content while they're playing it live, like I would so be down for that. That sounds amazing. There is some good news. It's still going. And actually, I don't know how close you are to Plano, Texas. Wow, that's right uh, the street. <laughs> <laughs> November 16th, uh, they have the Plano Symphony Orchestra. Ness, you Texas. should make that one of your next episodes. Right? I am putting that in my notes right now. Look at that. Look at Doug. <laughs> so it's called Video Games Live, and they do an amazing job. Now, this has been 10 years ago at least that I went that to this went? concert, but Video Game I Live. mean, a full, full oh, yeah. orchestra. Uh, it was amazing. Ness, oh, yeah. you got to check it out, bro. I will, I will definitely let you all know. Take your wife. I bet she'd love it. <laughs> Yeah, probably not. <laughs> just, uh, Come on. Just, no, no, no. Just you tell her you're taking. Fun. No, no. Just tell her you're taking her out to a nice dinner into the orchestra. Yeah, that's. Not- no, she finds out. <laughs> She's like, who's performing? Me. I'm like, uh, the uh, orchestra. She's like, what? It's like orchestra music, babe. It's cool. The minute Halo hits, she's gonna stare at you. She's gonna look at me so sideways. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't tell her Doug gave you the idea though. You're like he's a stranger. Don't make her hate him. Oh. I'm out of uh, arm's reach. That's true. You're in Missouri. <laughs> we're in a different state, so we're safe. Oh <laughs> man. Oh, that's awesome, Doug. Dude, thank you. I'm gonna look at. Is, I hope there's one near us because I, I wanna I wanna check it out. The closest yeah. one would be Iowa. It looks like I can drive to Iowa. That's not bad. That's not bad. All right. Last one. Number ten. What personal superpower would you like to have and why? Flying. Why? Yeah. Um, just, you know what movie kind of gave it to me? It was, um, oh my God, now I can't remember it. It's on the tip of my tongue. I don't know. Chronicle. Oh, yeah. So they find whatever alien something or whatever, and it gives them telekinesis, and then from that telekinesis they learn how to fly now i'm not asking for telekinesis but um i've just always been kind of and i'm not like a big heights person but i would fly i don't know how that works but um being able to just fly off somewhere speed just someone's like hey man we're gonna have a party but you're two states away i'm like okay i'll be there in 30 minutes that would be and i just okay. just take off all right like yeah i like it dougie what about you what would yours be you know, I, this may be out in left field, but I have to say breathing underwater. And I, that goes Ooh, back to Aquaman. my What's love going on here? of Sequest DSV. I don't know if you all ever watched that show. I remember the show. Oh, great. Yeah. I think there's so many cool things or hidden mysteries in the ocean that being able to explore there, it would be awesome. Okay. Well, all right. That's pretty good. I was going to say telekinesis, uh, yeah. mainly because it would be cool just to like uh, mess with people, like, you know. <laughs> If you can move anything, can you imagine like just somebody being a jerk? You just accidentally pull a chair out in front of them, they fall over it. I don't know. That'd be fun. 
just to be mischievous. I don't know. Maybe I'd be a villain. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but to that point, though, with telekinesis, like you would probably be the world's best music, uh, musician, uh, not musician, uh, uh, magician, magician. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. yeah. That's actually a good point. Like, It'd be a good side hustle. Oh man, make well, all the money. You can do the whole David Blaine thing, and everything. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. I like that. You, you, here you go. You, you're helping me uh, get side income. I like that. That's yeah, awesome. Well, that does it for our rapid fire questions. We've come at to the end of this nest. This has been the best interview. I've had the most fun. Um, oh, thank you. We we cannot express to you our thanks for coming on to our small little fun podcast here. You are definitely a kindred spirit of Wired Nerdy. Uh, how can people find you in your socials? I'm going to make sure on our edit, we'll put up how, you know, I'll put up the stuff, but how can people like come check you out where you are? Where are all your places? Yeah. So Neo Ness, you can find me on YouTube at Neo Ness. You can also find me on Instagram at uh, underscore Neo underscore Ness. Um, I post all of my latest pickups generally on Instagram and then I occasionally drop a few videos a month on my YouTube channel, various content resorting to video games and then how to build a collection, how to, you know, condense a collection and do's and don'ts of the trade. So you also thank make, you so much for having me. You make appearances <laughs> on some podcasts too. I do. Yeah. So I've uh, made appearances on, um, of course, the podcast and then uh, I occasionally pop up on Mr. Rightway's uh, podcast too. So, and then I, I have my own podcast, which we just my my partner, Mister Zelda, uh, Zelda well, Hat Guy, and myself myself, we just you know work work gets to, ahead of us. So and it's uh, trust me, we know it, it's hard to stay consistent. It, it, it's it's very hard to stay consistent, but yeah, you can find me on all those socials. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, is there any anything else, Doug, that I'm missing here? I think we're good. No, I mean I appreciate your time. I. Uh, got into lots of nerdy things, uh, got into your love of collecting. I'm kind of on the emulation side, but Ooh. I do have some uh, prize possessions back here. So I really appreciate you talking with us today. This is about thank, awesome. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for having being me on the show. Thank you so much, Ness. And hopefully we can have you back. That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, I'd love it. Thank you. Awesome. It's a great conversation. All right. That rounds it out, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And we really appreciate this conversation and uh, you have a good one. We'll catch you next episode. Yep. See ya.